Foot core is the ultimate secret weapon. Most runners don't realize at all how much of an impact it has on their running. If your feet hurt and feel a little stiff after your run, or if you want to improve your foot mobility and don't have a great deal of time on your hands, the good news is that I have just five simple exercises that you can do to improve your running. But first, let's look at why foot core is important. The foot, much like the core of your trunk, has smaller muscles that are really important for stabilizing the foot and bigger muscles that are essentially your prime movers. And when we don't work on the smaller muscle groups, the bigger ones just take over. And when that happens, we essentially start getting an uh, imbalance in, within the whole body. The body is a chain, and if, so if something is going wrong at the feet, that, the body will compensate, and that might move up the chain in the same way that it does within your trunk of your core. And so we want to make sure that we're working on those smaller muscle groups within the foot so that it stabilizes the foot and that everything within the body is in a good balance. All right, so the first exercise we're doing is what we call a toe crunch. You're going to take your sweat towel and lie it out in front of you and pop your foot down. Make sure your leg is nice and straight. And from here, you want to have your heel and the ball of your foot flat on the ground. The goal of this is that they're like little mini bicep curls for your toes. So you want to try and lift the toes up, grab the towel as much as you can, and then crunch the towel together. You can then obviously release it and then do it again. Repeat that. Lift. You can lift your foot up to release the towel if you want to, but then just make sure you put the ball of the foot back down and crunch and keep going. We want to do at least 10 to 15 reps of these. If your towel gets too crunched up, just roll that out. I'll do that for you. There we go. Roll that out and do it again. So keeping the ball of the foot down. So you don't want to lift the foot up and then grab because then we're just compensating in the toes. And just remember while you're doing all the reps to use all of your toes, not just the two or three strongest ones. Make sure you're getting all the toes reaching out and crunching in. The second one that we're doing is essentially toe spreaders. Now, for a lot of people, the first exercise of crunching means that you're going to land up having these toes, at what we call hammer toes. And sometimes we want to rather work on the mobility or the flexibility of the muscles at the bottom before we work on the strength aspect. And so if you can see the tendons at the top of your feet and if your toes are a little bit crunched like that, this is an excellent exercise for you to do. So what you're going to do is you're going to lift the toes up. You're going to spread them as wide as you can and as far forward as you can and then put them on the ground and hold that there for a second or two and then relax. What you don't want to do is you don't want to crunch. So let's go again and lift up and spread far forward and put them down without crunching the toes, holding it there for a second and then relaxing. In this exercise, which is slightly different to the first exercise, you can lift the ball of the foot up as you're trying to reach forward. And the goal here is that we're trying to reach the toes as, and spread them as much as we can, as far forward as we can and flat as we can. The third exercise we're doing is going to be focusing on your toe mobility. Now the toe is, plays a really, really important part in our walking gait and even more so in our running gait. Every time you step on the ground and you, come, you push off the ground, your toe goes into a, a, a flexion and extension. And it's really, really important that you have good mobility in this joint to really allow you to get the power generation. Every time you step, you have toe off and we push forward. If you don't have the mobility in here, that's going to limit your range of motion while you're running and essentially the power that you can push forward with. So what we want to do here is we're trying to isolate this muscle that works on the big toe at the bottom. So I want you to try and lift the big toe up on its own and put it back down and then try and lift the other four toes up and put them back down. If you are lifting your big toe and the other toes are also just moving with it, I want you to cheat a little bit. Use your hand and hold those four toes down and just lift the big toe on its own. What we're doing here is we're teaching the neural pathway from the brain down to the foot that this is the only muscle we want to use. So do a few repetitions like that and then test yourself, take away your hand, lift the big toe and see that those toes stay flat, big toe down, small toes up and equally you can cheat if your big toe is also lifting there. Nice and slowly up and other toes down. There we go. For exercise number four, we're going to be focusing on some of the smaller stabilizing muscles in the lower leg. So in particular, looking at the posterior tibialis and your perioneal. 
So what we're going to use is a mini band. You're going to put the mini band around both ends of your feet, just almost where your shoelaces would go. The one foot is going to act as an anchor. So this foot is going to anchor the band and you're going to work out of the other foot. So really important here, what I want is that you, this leg, so your knee needs to stay in line with your foot. Okay, that is the first point. From here, you are then going to try and everse, do ankle eversion. So that is essentially just moving the ankle outwards. So from the inside of your body out and coming back in. So that band is the anchor and this foot is working. Really key though, is that you don't move the whole leg to come out. You want to keep that nice and still and just gently move it out as much as you can. Even if it's a small little movement and you should be feeling that down the edge of your outside of your calf. As with the previous exercise, there are little cheats here. So if you find that your leg is dropping in and out, just put your hands over there just as, as, a, as a reminder to yourself to keep that knee in line with your foot and then move your foot in and out. You also want to make sure that your heel stays in the same place so that your heel isn't sliding in and out and it's just the movements on the ankle eversion. The last exercise we're doing is going to be focusing on your plantar fasciitis and some strength in and around the Achilles tendon as well. So this exercise is really, really important because what we're going to actually be doing is stretching out the plantar fascia while we're working on some strength. So what I want you to do is find a, a mat or a sweat towel, roll it up. You don't want something that's going to go too flat. You want to have something that gives you a pretty sturdy surface and put it against the wall. You're then going to come and do your calf raise over here. But first, before you do that, you're going to put your toes up against that mat or sweat towel. And you really want to exaggerate that lifting of the toes before you do this. From here, you are going to do a calf raise. You can use the wall as a bit of uh, stability, but you're wanting to lift yourselves up as much as you can with those toes in that extended position. And when you do this, you'll really feel that plantar fascia stretch while you are working on the strength of the calf and the, the uh, stabilizers around the Achilles. How often do we do our foot core? You're looking at at least two to four times a week. And I really don't have any kind of preference about whether that is before a strength session or after a strength session, preferably though before a run. You don't want to be doing this on very tired feet um, and coming in and then trying to do your foot core afterwards. If you are doing these exercises and you find your foot cramping a little bit, don't push through that. That cramping is a, is a bit of an indication that, that that area or that muscle requires some strength. So rather just relax and, and let that, that muscle relax completely before you start again. From a sets and reps perspective, for most of these exercises, we're looking between five to 12 reps and at most three sets. And again, if you are someone who is cramping quite a bit, you can reduce those number of reps so that you only work as many reps as, until your cramping sort of comes up and each week you can build on that as you go along. The thing is, knowing these five exercises and doing them is one thing, but if you really want to improve your running, you need to focus on this one thing. So go and watch this video next to uncover the secrets on becoming a much stronger runner.